Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Way back in October, I reported on this new Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. I bought one on back order from SparkFun the moment I saw it. I also purchased the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board and the Compute Module Antenna Kit to have the complete set. The back order took a long time. One can only imagine what might have caused the delay. I finally received the set this week. Let's unbox each of these and see what we need to do to get started. These Raspberry Pi compute modules are intended to let you deploy Raspberry Pi powered solutions in embedded situations. I went with the 8 gigabyte wireless version with 2 gigs of RAM. The module includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and has the facility to support power over Ethernet. There are two 4K HDMI outputs, and there are two camera inputs as well. Let's open the box of the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module and take a look. You can see it's about half the footprint of a regular Raspberry Pi 4. And there's no pins or headers or jumpers or anything like that. All of the connectivity to the Raspberry Pi 4 module is through these two high-density connectors on the bottom. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board gives you access to all of these features while you're developing your embedded solution. Let's pop the module onto the board and we're ready to get started. The first thing I wanted to figure out is how to get the Raspberry Pi OS installed. This is an interesting fork in the road. If you get the Compute Module 4 Lite version without the eMMC or flash memory on board, you can just boot from an SD card in the provided slot on the I.O. board. But since this is the 8GB eMMC version, we need to install a jumper on the first two pins of the J2 jumper here. I'm using this female-to-female -female breadboard jumper wire. Now, this jumper prevents the compute module from booting from the eMMC and makes it available as a USB drive on your PC. Look for the links down below to get this RPI boot set up. This installs a driver for a BCM2837 device and provides an executable called RPI boot. Connect the I.O. board to your PC via this USB port. Power on the I.O. board. I'm using a 12-volt positive pin adapter similar to those you would use for powering LED strips. The BCM2837 device is detected by Windows. Run the RPI boot executable. Remember, if Windows complains about an unreadable drive asking if you want to format it, always say no. This is the Linux volume in the storage, and Windows has no business mucking around here. And you now see the Compute Module eMMC memory as a drive on your PC. First, I try to flash the full Raspberry Pi OS with desktop and recommended software to it, but there's not enough room. I guess I'll get the 16GB Compute Module next time. Now, I flash it with the Raspberry Pi OS with desktop instead, using Bellina Etcher. While I was reading about how to do this, I stumbled upon this forum thread that says the USB ports on the compute module are disabled by default. There's a lengthy discussion about how the compute module is for professionals and read the data sheet, blah, blah, blah. While you have your compute module and I.O. board mounted as a drive on your PC, you simply need to edit the boot config text file, adding this line of text. I'm putting it in the overlay section. Make sure to look for the link down below. Now we are ready to boot the compute module into Raspberry Pi OS. First, I'm going to power off the I.O. board, remove the jumper, and unplug that USB cable. Now, connect a monitor to the I.O. board with an HDMI cable. I'm going to use the dongle for my wireless keyboard and mouse, plugging it into the USB port we just enabled. Power it on, and you see the familiar Raspberry Pi OS startup. Being a Raspberry Pi 4 board, let's take a look at the temperature. 
I'm excited to get this compute module going for another reason. The Raspberry Pi OS with desktop has Thani installed by default. This will support my getting started with this Raspberry Pi Pico. I bet you didn't see that coming. Stay tuned and thank you very much. So make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe, check out some of these other videos, and thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.